Welcome back, Controls Champions, to our PLC programming cookbook. Today, we're going to be talking about making things blink in structured text. If you haven't seen it, we've already done one of these videos also on ladder logic, making things blink. So check that out. I'll give you a link here. And for the sake of comparison and understanding, everything I'm going to do in structured text today, I also have an example in ladder logic. And again, I will share this in a download link in the description. So check that out if you'd like. We're working in Codasys. This is free. You can download it so you can try all this out. And uh, again, I'm working in a virtual machine. And this is really where I do all my programming. So if you're interested in virtual machines, I've got a whole video course. Uh, as of the time of this recording, it's free on the website. And we've got pieces of it on YouTube. So check that out as well. I'll put a link in the comments. So without further ado, let's talk about structured text. Let's start by looking at a timer. So if you're used to ladder logic, you're used to a timer maybe looking something like this, a couple inputs and a couple outputs. And in the documentation, it defines all of this, right? Input is just we're on or we're off. Are we timing or not timing? PT is uh, the preset time. How long do you want it to time before it turns on? Q is the output. Uh, again, we see this sometimes in other environments as like a DN bit for done or something else. Q is pretty common though for output used in uh, digital outputs and PLCs, et cetera, as well. And then ET for elapsed time. Sometimes we might see like an ACC for uh, for accumulated time or something like that. But these don't change all that much, really. Well, timers are pretty similar across the board for different PLC manufacturers, different programming environments. So hopefully this will be useful outside of just Codasys for whatever you're working with. Here we've got a timing diagram for what a timer looks like. That input that we were talking about, the in, when that turns on, we start timing, we start counting up inside this timer block. And again, that's the elapsed time. And at some point, we reach the preset time, PT, that's our threshold. And when the preset time is reached, we stop timing internally, we stop counting up, and we turn on that output bit. Now, this graphic isn't very good, that looks like a zero, but this is actually a, a capital Q. And if we look down here at the uh, names that we have. There isn't a zero or an O, it's, it's a capital Q. So uh, forgive them for that. And then as soon as that input turns off again, then we reset our elapsed time, our counter inside, and we also turn off that output. And this is specifically for a T on function. I'm not going to talk about T off or accumulating or anything else like that. So let's jump back to our structured text now. The way we instantiate this function, we have a defined tag up here. And this is very similar to what you would see in the ladder logic. We've got a tag defined there as well, t blink, defined as t on. t on is the type. t blink is defined as t on here as well. So we call t blink and we give it some input parameters inside these parentheses. And we define those in colon equals not blink dot Q. This is saying when this timer is not done, not outputting a Q, then the input is true. We're turning this timer on. So it's timing, it's counting up whenever it's not done counting up. And that means it's just going to be a free running timer. It's going to time up to, in this case, 2000 milliseconds, and then it's going to stop timing, and then it's going to start timing again from zero. So again, this is very similar, and I'm using this ladder as an example to hopefully help you make the connection very similar to what we've got here. Not tblink.q, it's a not tblink.q is going to the input, and then the preset is 2000 milliseconds. So this will run for two seconds. The next piece here is we are watching to see where we are in our elapsed time. 
And in structured text, we're just accessing that this way, tblink.et, that's the elapsed time. And we're saying whenever that's greater than 1000 milliseconds, blink 1000 should be on. Blink 1000 colon equals, this is the set operator in structured text, the thing that says load this thing into this variable. And in code assist, we call them variables. In some systems, we call them tags, same thing. It's just a named memory address that we can access. Um, so if tblink et is greater than 1000 milliseconds, then this is going to be true because this is a statement that ends up in a true or false. So for the first half of the timing, this will be false. And for the second half of the timing, this will be true. And we should get a blink. Let's run that quick and see what it looks like. Here's our blink 1000. And if we watch it, it is blinking. It's on for one second. It's off for one second. And we can also watch as this counts up. The blink is on when we're, it's, it's true, and this is greater than 1,000 milliseconds, and it's false when this is less than 1,000 milliseconds. Okay, so let's stop running for a second just to simplify the screen. Now the next step is, okay, we've made this blink, and in, in reality, maybe we want a, a one-second blink. By the way, for naming convention's sake, I'm calling this blink 1000 because it's on for 1000 milliseconds and then it's off for 1000 milliseconds. Uh, just my convention, uh, name it however you like when you're using this. Um, in reality, maybe I want something to blink fast and I want something to blink slow. So maybe I have a blink 1000 and I've got a blink 200 or something like that. So I could just copy paste this and I could make as many as I want and change these to be whatever I want. Not going to do that right now. After that, after we've created these blinking bits, now we want to use them, right? So what do we want to use it for? We want to use it for some kind of real output from the PLC, usually. And that real output is going to be, you know, maybe we want to turn an alarm on and off. Beep, beep, beep. Maybe we want to blink a light at the operator to cue the operator to press a button. Maybe we want a red stack light to turn on for a fault condition. Any one of those conditions could be represented. In this case, I'm just calling this active. That's what my active means. Pretend that means fault or, uh, you know, operator indicator light or whatever condition you want to make blink. And then this light represents the thing that's actually out there in the field, the light, the horn, the whatever. So you could think about that like stack light and this again being like the fault condition that's telling the stack light that it should turn on. And in ladder, you may be used to this concept of we just have a contact and a contact and it writes to this coil. We could, uh, when we're talking about Boolean logic and variables, this is like a write. And I'm saying that because now we're writing to this variable here with this Boolean statement. And I'm saying Boolean statement because this isn't math, although some, uh, some languages will let you represent this as a multiplication. So active, which is true or false, multiplied by Blink 1000, which is true or false. So in some places you would see it represented this way with an asterisk. In this case, it's not letting us use an asterisk. That's not how structured text works but I'm trying to give you this general concept that that's what we're doing. Um, so now we're saying whenever active and blink 1000 is true, then light is true. And again, this is identical to this rung here. So let's run this and see what it looks like. While the active condition, again, think about this like fault or whatever is false, light will always be false. Once I turn that on, set it to true, now notice that light blinks right along with Blink 1000. 
And we could use this Blink 1000 bit over and over and over again. We could have, you know, a, a stack light, and then we could have an alarm. We could have all sorts of things. And then, you know, this might be a fault condition that would run the stack light. And, you know, maybe this would be a critical fault or something. Just to give you some ideas, obviously we'd have to actually make these variables to clear them. But that's not what I'm trying to do right now. So I hope that helps you understand how this might work in your application. I hope it helps you understand PLC programming in general. I'm trying uh, to not be just specific to one manufacturer or programming style here. So I, I hope this gives you some things to think about. So we'll be putting this uh, a link to this file that you can download in the description and uh, keep on coming back. We'll keep on bringing these videos around. Oh, and do let me know what you think about this. If you have questions, comments, thoughts, I'm going to be watching the comments and responding. And in some cases, I'm, I'm looking for ideas from you also on what other kinds of programming cookbook things you'd like to see. So yeah, leave a comment. Hope to hear from you soon. Thanks. Thanks for watching. If there's one thing I like more than making these videos, it's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.